Welcome back to Chemistry 1032 instructional video. I am your host, Dr. Russell Betts, and I'll be guiding you through Chapter 2, Section 3, Isotopes and Atomic Mass. So, atoms of the same element, which means they have the same number of protons, can have different numbers of neutrons. That's a natural phenomenon. It happens with almost, I want to say every element. I'm not sure if it's everyone, but I'm pretty sure it's every element can have uh, the same atom, same number of protons, different number of neutrons. But not all atoms of the same element have the same mass number. Okay? Now that makes sense, right? Because mass number is, let's write that down, mass number equals number of protons plus number of neutrons, right? So if this number is changing, if that number is changing, then this number is changing. Makes sense, right? Mathematically, one number is changing, the other number is changing. So, atoms of the same element can have different mass numbers because the numbers of neutrons are changing. Remember, if it's the same element, the number of protons can't change. That makes sense, right? So now, iso these uh, this phenomenon is known as isotopes when you have the same element with different mass numbers, you have isotopes. Another way of saying this, if you have the same element, they'll have the same number of protons, but different number of neutrons. Those are isotopes of the same element, okay? If you are isotopes, you are the same element with different numbers of neutrons in the nucleus. Pretty cool, huh? Pretty cool. And that can be expressed in, you know, two different ways. We've already seen one way, the uh, symbolic notation. Say we have carbon uh, 14, 6, or, let me get rid of that. that doesn't, I don't like that. Or, there we go, you could say carbon dash 14, where that is a mass number. That is a mass number right there. Both of these are acceptable ways of expressing isotopes, okay? Pretty cool, huh? Now, let me show you something fun. Let's say we had H with a mass number of 1. Let's say we had H with a mass number of 2. Let's say we had H with a mass number of 3. Now, those are all hydrogen. How do I know that? Well, they're all, they're all H, right? That tells me they're all hydrogen. So look at the periodic table. And you will find, let me find a different color here. There we go. You will find the atomic number of hydrogen is 1. So every one of these bad boys gets the number 1 subscripted to the left because they all have a mass number, sorry, uh, atomic number of 1. So far, so good. Now, what if I were to ask you, how many protons are there? How many electrons are there? And how many neutrons are there? If I were to ask you that, what would you say? Well, I think some of this is fairly straightforward, right? Number of protons is one. You know, and how do I know that? How can I be so confident of that? Well, the atomic number is one. The atomic number is one, so therefore the um, number of protons is one. And they're atoms, so I know the number of electrons is one. You know, because protons equal electrons in the atoms. All right, well, what about neutrons? Well, we know the mass number equals the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And we have mass numbers, right? They're written very clearly right there. So that means the number of neutrons equals the number of protons minus, oh, I'm sorry, I wrote that backwards, wrote that backwards. It's the mass number minus the number of protons. So if we knew the mass number and we knew the number of protons, we could solve for the number of neutrons, which is very simple. So for number one, for this one, we have the mass number is number 1 minus the number of protons 
So the mass number is 0 for H with a mass number of 1. Now if for mass number of 2, this number becomes a 2. So this is a 1. And 3 is 2. So these are isotopes of hydrogen, H1, H2, H3. All of these are isotopes of hydrogen. Pretty neat, huh? Now, you try. You try this one. Here we have an atom of lead. has a mass number of 207. How many protons, neutrons, and electrons are there? Pause the video, work it out yourself, and then uh, restart the video when you're ready. Welcome back, guys. Now, you had to use a periodic table for this to, to solve for the uh, number of protons and neutrons and electrons and all that. A. Well, I don't happen to know the atomic number of lead. I have to look it up. So I'm going to grab your textbook. Your handy-dandy textbook. Look it up. Hopefully there's a periodic table on the front cover. There is. Lead, where are you? There you are. Lead's at atomic number is 82. Atomic number of lead is 82, so the number of protons is 82. B, that we don't know that yet. We'll figure that out in a minute. But C, number of electrons, very simple, is 82. Now, the number of neutrons, we have to figure that out. We have to work carefully here. Well, we know that the mass number equals 207. Number of protons equals 82. So number of neutrons equals the mass number minus 82, or 125 is the number of neutrons. OK? Protons are 82. Electrons are 82. Neutrons are 125. Now, if you didn't get that right, go back and try again. This is a very simple question. You should go back and try again. Make sure you can do it. All right? Here's another question. Now it's a little bit longer. You want to basically going to, you're going to do the same thing we just did, only you're going to fill in this table now. So again, pause the video and figure everything out. It's really not that hard. All right, welcome back. Again, I don't know the atomic numbers of these things. I don't memorize them, so I'm just going to look them up in the book. So let me grab the book. Oops, sorry about that. The atomic number of nitrogen is 7. Atomic number of zinc is 30. Atomic number of sulfur is 16. I just looked those up in the, in the periodic table. Nothing hard about that. Well, we know that if the... Oops, I'm sorry, everybody. Let me go back. There we go. Crazy computers. 7, 30, and 16. Let's, zinc was 30, right? Double check. Yep. So that means the number of protons are 7, 30, and 16. Remember, the atomic number is the number of protons. That's exactly what it is. Electrons are 7, 30, and 16. How can I be so confident? Well, I know that the number of protons equals the number of electrons in an atom. So they're equal. Now we've got to figure out mass number. Oh, well, mass number, let's write it down equals the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. And I'm told the number of neutrons right here. So it's 7 plus 8 equals 15. That's the mass number of this element of nitrogen, this atom of nitrogen. Okay? All right, next, zinc. Now we know the mass number, and we know the protons. So how many neutrons are there? Well. There must be 1. 30 plus 1 is 31. That's the mass number. Okay? And finally, we have the sulfur. We know the protons are 16. The neutrons are 10. So it must be, oh, I'm sorry, not 30. Uh, it be 26. There you go. And that's how you'd figure that out. So that's the kind of question you might see on an exam. Make sure you know how to do it. All right, isotopes and atomic mass. Now, the number below each element on the periodic table shows the 
average atomic mass for that element. It's the average atomic mass for the element. The atomic mass depends on the proportion, what's called natural abundance, of each isotope. And the atomic mass, which is what it's called, the atomic mass, is the average atomic mass weighted for all the isotopes of the at element found naturally. Now, it's what they call a weighted average. So you, we don't calculate them in this class. We do in general chemistry. Um, but just remember that when you're looking at the atomic mass, it's the average mass of an atom in that uh, particular element. Okay? So let's take a look at helium, for example. Helium's atomic mass is written right here. Now notice it is not a whole number. Generally speaking, these things are never whole numbers. They're average numbers, so they usually have decimal points in them. What this is, that is the average mass of a helium atom that you might find. Okay, So let's say you had a million helium atoms. The average of all those masses of those million helium atoms would be 4.002602. Okay? And that's kind of what that means. So it's a weighted average of all the naturally occurring isotopes of helium. All right, it's, it's a little bit confusing, but that's really what it is. And it's located below the atomic symbol in every square of the periodic table, and it is generally not a whole number. Now, this is not a mass number. Let me try that. Let me just, oops, sorry, guys. Let me just make this very clear. Ah, computers. There we go. Not a mass number. It is not a mass number. Make that very clear. Very common mistake. People call that a mass number. So it's an atomic mass. It's the average mass of an atom in an element. All right? So there you go, guys. There's section 2.3. And I believe that's the end of chapter two, a very short chapter. So make sure you understand it. It's very fundamental stuff. Even though the chapter is short, it's extraordinarily important. And with that, I wish you good luck and good chemistry.